Why do Scottish people and American people see history differently? If you don't think they do, then I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. In this video, I'm going to suggest why I think that is, but more importantly, I also want your opinion on the subject. I'm Bruce Fumi, and normally I take you to Scotland's wonderful scenery and historic locations to tell you about the people, places and events in Scottish history. If you're new to the channel, but you like stories from Scotland history, then you can click the red subscribe button at the bottom right. Now, the folk who are already subscribed now expect me to say, let me tell you a story, because that's what I normally do. This video is a little bit different, although I do have a story. This is Ken Moore on the banks of Loch Tay. It's one of my favourite places in the world. But there's also a Ken Moore in Washington State, USA. I assume people left here, crossed an ocean, then crossed a continent to build a new way of life all the way over on the other side of America. I suppose that's why almost 30% of the people who watch this channel are from the USA. More than 5% from Canada. Anyway, about a month ago in February 2021, I noticed a comment under one of my videos. Now, the video is called The Death of Robert the Bruce. It's one of my most popular videos. If you haven't seen it, you should. I'll leave a link at the end. A Scottish guy called Paul Maxwell commented, I just came here to the comment section to see how long it would take before an American declares that they're related to Robert the Bruce. Laughy face, laughy face. Now, some Americans might get a little bit upset at that. In fact, they did. A guy called Great Red Spot. I'll be honest, I don't think that's his real name. I think he maybe just had some bad acne or something like that. Anyway, Great Red Spot, and I know it's a planetary reference, said, hey Paul, I am related to Robert the Bruce. Like, so distantly it's pssst. Now I've no idea what pssst means. It might be a young person's acronym, you know what they're like. 99% of my ancestors are Scottish who came to America in the 1600s. Is there something wrong with being an American who's related to Robert the Bruce? I got all the documentation. What's your problem? And to think I wasn't even going to mention it in the comments if not for you. Now, I was on Red Spot's side at first. Is it a bad thing being related to Robert the Bruce? No. Is it wrong for folks in the US to be proud of their Scottish roots? Of course not. If you're watching Red Spot, philosophically, I was with you. Until you said 99% of your ancestors were Scottish. Right back to the 1600s. I just lost faith. 99% over 400 years. That's a level of inbreeding that hasn't even been achieved in Fife. And they work at it. I think that's why they have the red spots. I don't think anyone in Scotland's got 99% Scottish ancestry. Think about how many ancestors you'd have between now and 1600. I just don't think that red spots done the maths. I have. Assuming a generation reproduces every 25 years, from two parents to four grandparents to eight great grand, you get the idea. That's 131,070 ancestors. Now, leaving aside the supernatural level of inbreeding to go 400 years without extending the gene pool, 99% of 131,070 doesn't give you a whole number of people. And OK, one or two of them may have lost a limb or two in the French-Indian Wars, but I'm just not convinced. Now, let's not be harsh on Red Spot. What he was doing was exaggerating, and everyone does it. I've done it a million times myself. It's just that 99% was way too unrealistic, and it distracted me from giving the fulsome support that I wanted to. And it kind of reinforced Paul Maxwell's suggestion that some Americans may make grandiose, overblown claims. Actually, I took the numbers a bit further. Assuming the same 25 year time frame between generations, if you go back to 1314 when Robert the Bruce was in his pomp, 
That's 28 generations. And 536,870,910 ancestors. And I thought, if 99% are Scottish, one of them's got to be Robert the Bruce. And if there were that many Scots kicking about, no wonder we won the Battle of Bannockburn, eh? That's what I thought. It's not what I said. Partly because I knew all 536,870,910 ancestors wouldn't have been alive at the same time in 1314. But more so because I could see a social media spat kicking off. I spend so much of my time worrying about a rami between pro and anti-independence Scots. I let a stushy about Scots and Americans' different view of history slip under the radar. Just one of the many things invented by a Scotsman. The point is that whilst Americans are rightly thinking, who does that cheeky jumped up jock think he is? I'm proud of my ancestry. Scots are probably thinking, Aye, claiming Robert the Bruce was your granddad's exactly the type of thing that Americans would do. I'm here to calm those transatlantic waters. I'm going to tell you what I think, then I'm going to ask you, both Scots and Americans, to tell me what you think without a stushy in the comment section below. Now, for the benefit of the non-Scots, a stushy is an altercation that's less heated than a rami. The Sarajevo assassination of Archduke Ferdinand was a stushy. World War I was a rami. The point is that I think Scots and Americans do see history differently. Now, I haven't done a scientific survey and this video will be littered with gross generalisations, massive oversimplifications and outright speculation. 99% of which are true. But the comment sections underneath my videos give lots of anecdotal evidence. You see, Americans look at Scottish history and say, what did my ancestors do? Scots look at Scottish history and say, what did the English do to my ancestors? Now, obviously, this is an oversimplification. Some Americans do say, what did the English do to my ancestors? And Scots say, I'll tell you what the English did. I'm just saying. In general, Americans are emboldened by our history. Scots are embittered. Now, talking about Americans isn't quite correct. Uh, it's not just Americans. To varying degrees, it's people from North America. And it may be that the bigger population makes it seem like United States Americans do it more, or it might be a genuine attitude difference. But I want you to tell me your thoughts in the comment section. So my anecdotal observation is that Scots are way more concerned about what happened to Scots as a people. Americans are more concerned about their particular ancestors. Less emphatically, I think that Scots are more likely to associate themselves with downtrodden, ordinary people. Americans are more likely to associate themselves with a celebrity or a royal. Now, don't get me wrong, the desire for prestige is a pretty universal human quality. I've never yet had somebody comment, Aye, my nine times great granny was one of the prostitutes who serviced Jacobite troops on the road to Derby. And my 18 times great granddad was the guy who slept in and missed the Battle of Bannockburn. People don't tend to make those kind of claims. To be honest, I think that Scots are less likely to even know who their 18 times great granddad was. But Americans and Canadians will give a description about how their family crossed the Atlantic with names and dates and what they had in their suitcase. So, why is this? Here's what I think. Number one, there may be a simple explanation that Americans slash Canadians slash colonials who are interested in Scottish history are by definition a subset of the Venn diagram who are going to be more interested in tracing their ancestry. They're not representative of Americans in general. In fact, maybe Americans are no more interested in their ancestors than Scots. Hmm. Two, most Scots look back to Highland Clearance as a bitter loss and an end of a culture. To Americans looking back, that period can now be seen by survivors as a genesis. 
And I think that's why Americans are really interested in clan history, whereas Scots are more interested in medieval struggles or enlightenment ingenuity. Although there may be modern politics at play as well. Three, America is a newer and more diverse country. Individuals search for a sense of self and belonging in their ancestry, whose arrival in America was recent enough that they can trace records. Scots just tend to accept that we've kind of always been here. Our ancestors were the ones that never bothered to leave. Hey Tam, what did your ancestors do during the building of the diaspora? Och, they just sat in the house and watched the telly, eh? Hibs were playing Hearts in the Cup final, eh? Doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Incidentally, Hibernian FC and Heart of Midlothian are soccer teams that play in Edinburgh. Four, I do think there's a deeper cultural reason that a Scottish guy somewhat impolitely mocked Americans claiming descent from our great historical figures. And it's that in Scotland, everybody knows from whom they come. Jock Tamson. Even somebody like me, whose dad's West African, knows that his nth time great granddad was Jock Tamson. Now for the non-Scots, we have an expression that we're all Jock Tamson's bairns. That is to say, don't get above yourself because you're no better than anyone else. We all have the same common ancestor. He's not Robert the Bruce, he's not King James IV, he's not the second cousin of Bonnie Prince Charlie twice removed. He's just plain old John Thompson. Don't mistake that for John Thomas. He's a dick and he's English. Five. Take points three and four together, and America's a country built on individualism and go-getters going and getting, and we've got this because my grandpappy built the thrust and vibrancy of a nation, whereas his brother stayed home in Fife and worked doing the pit, eh? His brother remained in East Central Scotland and worked in the coal mines. But they're both Jock Tamson's bairns. So, two culturally different descendants of Jock Tamson, both fiercely proud of their Scottish heritage, clashed in my comment section. To me, as Scottish, a Scottish African as you'll get, it's a genuine joy and privilege to take you to our beautiful places to tell Scots of the home country or the diaspora stories about our history. In a moment, I'm going to put up a link to that video about the death of Robert the Bruce that started this controversy in the first place. But in return, I've got a task for you. Whether you agree or disagree with me on anything that I've said, please give your thoughts in the comment section below. More than any other, I'm genuinely interested to know if you think Scots are more communal than individual, are Americans more interested in ancestry, do we pay too little attention to our history? Do you have your own theory? And hey, don't upset each other. I mean, dog is going to be a lamb, Ali. Cheering Rasta.